interest of time, we'll move forward to the, the next uh, speaker. Uh, Guy uh, Unrich, Dr. Yu, as he's known in Ottawa, is a, a medical oncologist uh, who trained at the Mayo Clinic in oncolytic viruses. He uh, runs a lab both in Heidelberg, Germany, and in Ottawa, and he's here to talk to us about oncolytic viruses. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind invitation and the opportunity to share our data uh, with you. Uh, I hope my voice will make it through the talk, actually. Um, uh, so I guess we got a quite impressive uh, and comprehensive overview about um, established um, forms of uh, immunotherapy for cancer today, um, and that makes things easier for me, actually. Um, so because I believe uh, that the oncolytic viruses um, do contribute to this arsenal of um, novel therapies. So we heard a lot about um, immune checkpoint uh, antibody spites and also uh, adoptive cell transfer uh, strategies here. And I like to add the oncolytic viruses. Um, one of the uh, many different viruses, uh, herpes simplex virus, uh, was approved last year by the FDA and the EMA in Europe as well. Um, so this is the first um, approved virus for uh, melanoma treatment uh, right now. Obviously, there are many other different platforms. Um, my lab is pretty much focused on the measles virus platform, but uh, today I will give a brief um, um, spotlight on also different platforms, including um, VSV um, and Vaccinia uh, and uh, parvovirus um, as well. Um, so as compared to the very sophisticated mechanisms of actions we heard about for the other immunotherapeutics, um, the um, viral approach is quite simple. So we have a viral agent uh, which is not infecting normal cells, uh, but if so, um, viral replication should be inhibited and um, the virus is cleared at the end from the healthy tissue um, as opposed to the malignant transformed cells, the cancer cells, um, they should be infected. The viral replication proceeds and at the end you have tumor lysis and viral spread and the tumor bark is gone. So this would be the ideal world and we uh, wouldn't need to, to have uh, any pressure to think about other therapies. Um, so maybe in, in the real world it's uh, quite different and more complicated. Um, so what we actually um, do believe is that um, viruses can act as an adjuvant and uh, it can also act as an in-situ anti-tumor vaccine and it can produce many dangerous signals um, and inflammation in this tumor microenvironment. And uh, we worked a bit to try to enhance the, all these effects by engineering oncolytic viruses expressing uh, different um, um, compounds like cytokines, bites, or uh, checkpoint blockade antibodies uh, or different tumor-associated antigens. And the hypothesis here is that we can enhance the efficacy of the oncolytic effect uh, of the oncolytic agent. Uh, and uh, also we have a tumor-restricted um, 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 agent which might limit the toxicity. Um, so measles virus is an, a small negative stranded RNA virus um, and uh, all of our work is actually based on the measles virus vaccine strain, which has an excellent safety profile and uh, for decades is uh, used for uh, vaccination of children as well. Um, so we did modify this virus in many different ways and obviously there's no time to go in all these details. We worked a lot on targeting on the entry and post-entry level using microRNA techniques and uh, also uh, antibodies and uh, small ligands um, displayed on the surface. We also uh, did some approaches in terms of envelope exchanges um, to circumvent some human responses against measles virus. Um, but today I will focus on our immunomodulatory approaches. So different compounds like cytokines, checkpoint antibody spikes and tumor-associated antigens expressed from the virus, encoded on the virus genome, actually. Um, so with GMCSF, the first approach, we could show that, uh, or I have to admit that measles is a bad oncolytic in, in, in mice, actually, because there's a strong post-entry block. But if the measles virus is encoding for GMCSF, um, you get a much better response, and we ended up having like 40% of uh, long-term remissions here in these uh, syngenic mice uh, bearing uh, MC38 colorectal cancer cells. 
Uh, we tried to look a little bit in the uh, details, um, and we could show that we have specific uh, cell killing uh, from effector cells from mice treated with uh, measles virus encoding for GM-CSF, uh, as opposed to uh, UV inactivated uh, virus here. And also the ELI spot could show like a tumor-specific interferon gamma secretion uh, from spinocytes from mice treated with the very same uh, virus encoding GM-CSF. Um, we could also show that we have uh, a robust uh, tumor vaccination effect when we are implanting um, tumors on the contralateral side of the mice, uh, which were formerly uh, treated with measles virus GM-CSF, so they abolished a secondary engraftment of, of these tumors. Um, we tried another cytokine, IL-12, uh, formerly um, also uh, in clinical trials, kind of a dangerous uh, substance if you administer this uh, systemically, but maybe a local expression and the tumor environment um, mediated through the virus uh, might reduce uh, systemic toxicity here. That was the hypothesis. Uh, in terms of efficacy in mice, again, we uh, haven't seen such a response with a measles virus encoding for IL-12, um, close to 100% long-term remissions. We have uh, tons of uh, uh, proteins in the supernatant of infected cells in the microgram area here, and we could show, these are the first non-published uh, um, uh, details uh, we could reveal. Um, so we have an intratumoral cytokine profile here, and we could show an upregulation of some effector cytokines, including interferon gamma and TNF-alpha uh, here uh, in uh, mice uh, which were treated with a um, IL-12 virus. Could also show that we have tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Somehow the NK cell population went down, most likely, that's our hypothesis, due to um, um, their effect uh, tumor cell killing. But we had a uh, T cell in, uh, effector cell um, enhancement here. And we could also show that we have efficient T and NK cell activation in these tumors. Um, so I switch gears here again. So we encoded um, some checkpoint antibodies as well. We uh, used murine variants of uh, ipilimumab and pemrolizumab actually encoded off the uh, measles virus uh, on the measles virus genome. And we could show that we uh, could gain a moderate survival benefit in this uh, murine model of uh, melanoma B16. That's a bad model in this uh, setting, I guess, because we don't have the time to really see the benefit of our checkpoint locate antibodies. But however, we saw an increased level of CD3 positive cells, decreased Treg population, and an increased T effector to Treg ratio here. Um, moving further, um, the previous speaker was mentioning um, the success story of bites. So uh, measles virus with more bites, uh, which are encoding um, this biospecifics, uh, could be generated actually. And uh, we again get uh, tons of proteins if we infect our cancer cells with this uh, virus. And we could show that we get specific uh, cell lysis actually uh, using PBMCs from uh, healthy donors from our lab. So this actually is just mediated um, by the immunological uh, synapse uh, uh, from the uh, bite and by a healthy um, donor PBMCs in a model of colorectal cancer cells in mice and uh, melanoma as well. And we could also show that if we take uh, murine effector cells, this is a um, murine uh, uh, trip to specific T cell clone. This one is highly uh, um, efficiently um, uh, killing cells uh, uh, mediated by the bite, um, um, which is uh, actually encoded on the measles again. Um, so I switch gears um, the last time. So the heterologous um, oncolytic vaccination approach. Um, this is um, actually, or this concept is developed by Brian Lichty, David Steudel, and John Bell, and uh, collaborators. Um, this is employing actually two different viruses. Um, one adenovirus, a non-replicating virus, encoding a desired tumor-associated antigen, and a um, uh, Marava virus, uh, which is actually a brazil um, um, insect virus uh, closely related to a VSV. Both viruses are encoding the very same tumor-associated antigen, and it could be shown that this is um, very um, um, good in driving um, 
uh, anti, uh, the antigen specific T cell responses in mice and macaques as well. And this concept um, is um, brought and translated to the clinic. Um, this is what we want to do preclinical. We want to um, exchange the non replicating adenovirus by a replicating measles virus uh, here, which will be um, injected directly in the tumor cell. So we have not only uh, the prime with the desired tumor associated antigen like DCT or MHA. A3 or a foreign antigen like E6, E7, but we also expect that we have some uh, epitope um, spread and uh, the expression of some tumor-associated antigens we don't know about. Um, so um, i like to move further to the translational aspects. This is actually two years ago in Germany. Uh, at this time in Germany, only 20 patients uh, had been treated in this country with oncolytics. Uh, this was uh, patient number 21, and it was the first patient who received the pox virus, uh, vaccinia virus tax 594, um, generated uh, or uh, invented by Generex, uh, the company from John Bell in Canada. And we treated HCC patients. Uh, we administered the virus intra lesionally in the liver lesions uh, as well as systemically and um, uh, this uh, was the first approach. Um, we had some regulatory problems here as opposed to uh, Canada, the, the system or the regulation is not as um, easy than, than here, I guess. Um, so this is, again, a Canadian approach, uh, as I mentioned before, the heterologous oncolytic uh, prime boost um, um, vaccination. Um, um, uh, concept. Um, so this is an ongoing trial um, using um, adenovirus coding for MHA3 and uh, Marava virus uh, coding for MHA3. It's a basket trial with solid tumors expressing MHA3. Uh, there are three arms uh, with uh, one arm with adenovirus prime alone, one arm with uh, Marava uh, alone, and then the combination prime boost arm here. Um, so uh, the phase one is completed right now. Uh, there have been like uh, altogether three DLTs, but um, altogether the, the safety profile was quite well. Um, nearly all patients uh, experience flu-like symptoms and get um, strong fevers, which is transient. And uh, now it's um, moving forward to the phase two uh, expansion um, um, cohort. Um, so um, this is a trial I'd like to mention just briefly. Um, it's a parovirus trial um, which is initiated in Germany, a, a, mul a monocenter trial, and we are um, uh, treating patients uh, with uh, pancreatic cancer uh, with at least one uh, liver metastasis and the virus uh, is administered intralesionally again and also systemically. We have treated three patients so far. Uh, at least we have seen uh, so far uh, one uh, patient um, developing necrotic hepatic lesions which were not injected with the virus. So we have first evidence that we might have also um, some immune reactions directed uh, to distant metastasis here. Um, so I just briefly wanted to mention the uh, Amgen uh, trial, a phase 1b uh, uh, slash 3 trial, the master key 265, uh, using uh, TVEC, the herpes virus, in combination with pembrolizumab. The, uh, the, the 1b trial um, is finished. Uh, 21 uh, patients um, have been uh, treated so far, and um, we have seen a tremendous um, uh, re overall response rate of 57% with uh, the double agent, and uh, this is motivating to the uh, phase three, which is ongoing right now, a multi-center trial uh, worldwide, actually, and uh, this will be randomized and uh, blinded as well, and uh, it will compare um, the TVEC plus pembrolizumab as compared to pembrolizumab alone in the first-line setting, uh, setting in melanoma patients uh, uh, in late stage. Um, we also want to launch a trial next year in Germany um, in a monocenter session using measles virus again in combination with pembrolizumab. So the pembrolizumab is in this case not encoded on the virus. It's given uh, separately. Uh, we teamed up with Merck and Merck is willing to support this trial. It's a phase 1b uh, slash 2 trial. The phase 1 part of the study has two arms, one safety run in uh, with measles virus only, then the combination with pembrolizumab, and in the phase two extension, we want to treat uh, roughly uh, 25 patients uh, in the combination with the checkpoint blockade antibody. 
And the purpose of this trial, this is again pancreatic cancer where we do not expect any signal with uh, checkpoint blockade antibodies alone, um, but the purpose obviously is to, to attach a, a big translational research program. And we heard a lot of uh, uh, predictive uh, immune signatures and also we uh, try to, to find one and we try to look into the cytokine and chemothine uh, profiling uh, also go to the deep uh, sequencing exome and on the transcriptome level as well. Maybe some small microRNAs also can give us some, some uh, predictive markers here in terms of um, uh, the virus at least. And TCR sequencing is also something which is uh, big in, in Heidelberg. So we also try to attach all this to, to, uh, yeah, to shed some light on, on what is going on. Uh, during this treatment. So i like to uh, sum up, and I, I guess everybody in the room is agreeing that uh, immuno or immunoviral therapy is actually changing some paradigms here. And I believe that oncolytic viruses can be part of the uh, arsenal and in concert with a rational immunomodulation that might enhance both the efficacy and also the safety of, of some of these approaches. So with this, I'd like to thank uh, uh, my, my lab and also our collaborators in, in Germany and in, uh, in Canada, and I'm uh, happy to take some questions if there are any. Thank you. I'd, I'd also like the other speakers to come up to the podium as well.